My name is Dave Sharp, and welcome to the Hoth event, right? Give these guys a round of applause for putting on an awesome event. This is their, this is their first one, and I'm a guy who's put on a lot of events over the years, and so Clayton and Mark came to me uh, several months ago and said, you know, hey, I want to I wanna put on an event, you know? And back then, it was just a twinkle in their eye. And what's cool to see now is everybody sitting in this room, right? And that entrepreneurial vision come true for them, right? So I'm going to talk to you guys about my entrepreneur journey um, over the course of the, the last six or seven years. And, um, you know, hopefully we have a little fun and hopefully we learn some stuff. Uh, first, I want to tell you guys a little bit about who I am um, and why I uh, why, you know, why I think they asked me to speak. And I'm going to come down off of the stage and probably walk around a little bit because it makes me feel more comfortable too. And hopefully it doesn't make you guys feel awkward if I'm like kind of hovering over you or spitting on you a little bit because, you know, so sometimes that happens, you know. The first row in most shows gets all the DNA, but in, when, I'm, when I'm doing the event, um, usually it's, it's all the way back to, you know, the fifth or the, fifth, fifth or the sixth row. So you guys are going to get a little DNA back here too. And just hope, you know, just wipe it off or just say, Dave, you're spitting too much or whatever, and I'll, I'll try to back up a little bit. But um, I'm just going to spread the love, brother. I'm, I'm a married man, so nobody has to worry about me. You know, that, that DNA I'm going to keep to myself. But in terms of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, you know, the, the spit, that's a different story. So um, I live here in St. Pete, Florida, and I've lived here my whole life, and my story starts out uh, back in um, 2008 when I was in a laundry room here in St. Pete, Florida, and I was hunched over the toilet because I was a heroin addict back then, and um, kind, of a, kind of an odd intro, right? You know, I'm going to tell you about how successful I was, but I'm going to also tell you the truth because I think there's a lot of people in this room who have dreams and aspirations, and you know, may not be right now where they want to be. Could I see a show of hands if that would be true for you? You're not quite where you want. Guys, wake up. I know you just had lunch, but come on. You guys, some of you guys flew. How many of you guys flew here? How many of you guys flew in? Right, hands up. How many of you guys drove in? How many of you guys just, how many of you guys did whatever you had to do to get to this event? Maybe money was tight. It was a big decision for you guys to be here. And you made a decision that, hey, I'm going to learn something. I'm going to walk away. Hands up if that's you. Hands up if in the, in the last three months, you've looked at your situation and said, I don't know if I got three more months in me. How many of you guys felt that bottom? How many of you guys in the last year had a crisis happen that maybe not everybody knows about that you had to battle through and push forward through, right? Hands up on that. So me, I was hunched over a toilet seat. And uh, I don't know if you guys know anything about heroin and drug use, but if you don't, I'll give you a little, give you a little uh, uh, insight into what my life was like back then. Um, I was shaking and I was spilling it all over the toilet seat. And this was a dirty, disgusting laundry mat with, you know, uh, you know, a bathroom that wasn't clean. You know, you guys ever been to a public laundry mat? It's not clean. It's not. You don't want to be eating off the floor there. And I had spilled it on the toilet seat, and um, and I was so desperate back then. My life was boiled down to this bag, which had one hit in it, and I soaked it up off of this dirty toilet seat. Right? And that maybe wasn't the most disgusting thing I've ever done. Right? I've done other disgusting things before. But in that moment, I said, this is not my destiny. Right? I said, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, I, there's more for me in, in life than this. And so I stood up and I looked at myself and I said that um, there's got to be a better way. And I walked to my dad's house, who hadn't seen me in two years, and I knocked on his door and I said, essentially, will you help me save my life? And he let me come and sleep on his couch. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about that, plus show you some picture proof, because nowadays online, anybody can tell any lie, right? You know, just because it's online doesn't mean it's true. So I'm going to show you guys some proof of, of kind of where I'm at, where I came from. And hopefully today, because I didn't have a whole lot of time to, to, uh, to prepare for this, because I run a company called Legendary Marketer. And... What we do is we go and teach people entrepreneurship, right? And we teach it through the power of the internet. So we give people the ability to learn skills just like you guys are learning here 
such as how to build an SEO agency and how to take your skills right, that you already have because each one of you in this room has a unique skill set. You have gifts that you were given. For me, back in the day, my gifts, my skill sets were that I was a hustler. I could sell like hell. I've sold some crazy shit before in my life. I mean, I drove around one time and tried to sell a saw that was this big to every pawn shop in town. Nobody, I spent more gas than what I made on this saw. And I can't remember who I stole the saw from, right? I think I ended up getting $5 for this saw, right? So over the course of my years and my time, I've developed not just a, 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 a skill set for stealing things. Now, that's not the point that I'm making. A skill set for being gritty, right? A, a skill set for being a hustler. You guys are here, I'm guessing, because you have parts of your personality and parts of who you are that are different than somebody who's just looking to go to an office and sit there for eight hours a day and just trade time for money. Am I right about that? Would you guys agree with that? Or are, you guys, or are you guys here learning, do you want to learn how to just be employees, right? Because that's okay too. But my hunch is that you guys are here, you want to learn how to be business owners, you want to, you know, you know, you want to learn how to make unlimited income, and you want to learn how to live life on your terms. Would you agree with that? So for me back in, in, uh, in, in those times, I, you know, I thought you know, making $40,000 a year was so far out of reach for me that I thought, you know, if I can even just get enough money in my pocket to be able to, to buy a vehicle, that would be awesome. And this was back in 2008. I'm happy to say as well uh, that I've been heroin and drug free for the past almost 10 years as well. I got clean in February of 2008. <clears throat> so that's probably one of my biggest accomplishments. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, and hopefully I have, have enough time. Let me get into this. So I've got goals. How many people in this, in this room have goals and dreams and aspirations? Raise your hands, guys, if that's you. So one of my goals as an entrepreneur is to do a billion dollars in sales. And over the course of the last seven years or so of being online, um, I've done about 20% of my goal, right? And now we're talking about a kid who was hunched over a toilet doing heroin back in 2008, who I had, hepati I, had, I had contracted hepatitis C, which I eventually went on medication for that when I could afford to get insurance, right? And I got cured from that, thank God. And it's kind of a, a, a sobering day for me today because on the way down here, I was um, recording a video for one of my fellow entrepreneurial friends who has stage four cancer. And he's, um, he's 39 years old. Right? And he's been battling for four years. And every single couple of months, he goes into the doctor. And the doctor says, you got two to four months to live. Right? And he goes back out and he fights a little bit more. And now it's been four years. And he's really on his last leg. And he's just finally, fi you know how we are. right? We're hard-headed. We don't want to ask for help. He's finally asking for help and letting some people help him raise some money. Because he didn't go and get as much life insurance as he needed to get, right? So today I was able to make a contribution and also spread the word on Facebook. And, um, and I'm reflecting on that today, right? Because sometimes we go through this process without really remembering how good we got it. You know, just the simple fact that we're here, that we've got um, opportunity. People come to this country and have been, in, been coming to this country for decades, for centuries, for one thing, the, B, the big O. And no, it's not an orgasm, folks. It's opportunity, right? So we have an amazing gift. And I want to talk to you about how I've, I've making, made the most out of my opportunity um, and how I've set bigger goals for myself. I'm, uh, just to put things in perspective, I'm 34 years old. I was born in November of 1983. Okay, I'm married. I have an 18-year-old daughter. Do the math, and then I've also got a 20-month-year-old daughter. Right? Wasn't exactly Planned Parenthood back when I was 16 years old, but I made the most of what I had. I made the most with with the situation that I had put myself in. Right? So I've got a goal of doing a billion dollars in sales, and um, and and. The reason why I share that, and I'm going to come back to that, is because um, a lot of you guys have goals here as well, but you can stretch those goals a lot bigger, right, than probably where they're at right now. 
A lot of people are more running from what they don't want instead of running to what they do want. So let me ask, we'll do a quick poll and you guys can see. Because whether you're going to be doing SEO, whether you're going to have your own agency, whether you're going to be doing whatever other form of marketing, entrepreneurship, or serving a company that you work for, it's really important that you understand the psychology of the people that you're working around and that you're serving and selling to, right? The, the, I call it the difference between the mechanics and the dynamics, right? Everybody wants to get good at the mechanics, which is the point, and where do I click, and how do I do it? But what I want to talk to you guys about is higher level skill sets today of how you're going to build a business, right? Even if you're just in a position in a company, you should be looking at everything that you're doing like it's a business, right? How do you systematize what you're doing? How do you systematize your meals? How, do, how productive are you, right? Everything is a business. And when you start getting real serious about what you're doing right, you know, every single day, no matter how small you start, then all of a sudden you actually have a real shot at achieving some, some big stuff. So I made that goal this year that I want to do a billion in sales. And I had sort of lost track of making big goals because I had some big success, which I'll talk about here in a second. And then I got kind of complacent. And so in 2018, when it started, I said, hey, I need to give myself a bigger vision to be able to shoot for. And that's when I came up with this goal. And I'll, I'll talk more about that over, over the course of the next few minutes. Um, so... What I want to talk to you about, again, because I had limited uh, time to be able to prepare, so I wanted to put as much value for you guys into this short amount of time that I have as possible. So I'm going to give you guys five laws of sustainable success as an entrepreneur, right? Sustainable success, because the power of being an entrepreneur is is, is, is infinite. But if you don't set yourself up from the beginning to be sustainable, then what's going to end up happening is you're going to burn out or you're going to not have planned for the landmine down the road. And all of a sudden, it's either going to fizzle out, you're going to get burnt out, or something else is going to go wrong. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about five things today that are going to give you sustainable success. And, and here's a real layman's term way to understand sustainable success. Would you rather earn a million dollars in one year or would you rather earn $80,000 a month for the next five years? Right? Which one? Right? Let me, let me give it to you like this. Would you rather earn a million dollars quick this year? Which, which, guys, after taxes, how much is that? You guys should be real familiar because I just got my tax bill the other day and had to change my underwear, okay? <laughs> so just because as an entrepreneur you made a million dollars doesn't mean you get to keep a million dollars, right? So would you rather make a million dollars this year or would you rather make $10,000 a month over the course of the next five years, right? When you think about it, a million dollars is actually going to be more like roughly six hundred and you know, it's going to be about just over $600,000, right? In between six and 700, okay? Whereas 10,000, she's up here doing the math, right? She's like, I don't know, what would I pick? Let me do this math. These are the choices that you have to make, right? As an entrepreneur, do you think short-term? Do you think long-term? So I would also give you guys a gift. I'm doing an event this coming weekend and um, this event is called the Sales and Marketing Experience. So at the end, I'm going to give you guys all, if you want them, right? If you want to be my VIP guest to the event this week, and if you want to stay in town, or if you're already in town, and you want to come and get two more days of amazing value, I'm going to give you guys two free tickets to my Sales and Marketing Experience just for being cool and just for showing up to the HothCon, uh, which is a $497 value. And I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to show you guys how to, how, to, how to claim those at the end. But let's get into this, okay? I'm not going to promise that this road of entrepreneurship is going to be overnight riches. I'm not going to promise that it's going to be easy. I'm not going to promise that it's going to be, um, you know, something that's going to change your life immediately. As a matter of fact, I can tell you that this road is going to be hard. It's going to be ugly. It's going to be, it's, it's, it's going to make you question yourself. It's going to make you, it's going to make you wonder if you made the right decision. It's going to make you question your relationship. It's going to make you question everything in your life. How many people can relate to that? Say, I, if you're an entrepreneur, okay? How many people can relate to the, 
the, the being up late at night, hunched over the computer, you got knots all in your back and you're going, why am I doing this? Because you're not even making money yet, right? If you haven't felt that pain yet, then you don't really know what it's like to be an entrepreneur. If you haven't been between a really rock and the, and the you know how people say between a rock and a hard spot? Well, if you're an entrepreneur, the rock's right here and the hard spot's right here a lot of times for a lot of weeks, for a lot of months, and oftentimes for a lot of years, right? So I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm not going to fluff it. I'm not going to come up here and say being an entrepreneur is, you know, because you know what? If it was that easy and everybody could be successful, guess what? Everybody would be what? Everybody would be doing it. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it, and everybody would be successful. So it's not, this is a, this is a path built for warriors, right? This is a path that's built for people who really are willing to take the risk, but by taking the risk are going to get the rewards, okay? I will obviously be honest with you guys, and then you can decide your path, okay? Um, for me, I feel like there's a lot of hype nowadays. Everybody's making content online, and, um, and, and so when you get honest, valuable insights from somebody who's currently building a business, I think that that's the difference between mentorship and teaching, right? For me, I surround myself with great mentors. Mark Hardgrove sitting in the back of the room. This guy is one of my mentors, right? He's the owner of Hoth, right? He's the CEO here at Hoth. If you get a chance to have a conversation with Mark, you take that. You pe see, see, smart people recognize when they have an opportunity to spend time with somebody who knows something that they don't know, whereas somebody who's not successful, they're going to blow that off or they're going to be looking at their phones or they're going to be going wherever they got to go to be comfortable, right? But if you walk up to somebody like Mark or you walk up to somebody like Clayton and you're nervous and you don't want, know what to say, but you do it anyways, then you're on the path to, path to success, right? Because you're understanding that to be successful, you got to push through, push through some uncomfortable stuff. And these guys are going to tell you the truth, just like I'm going to tell you the truth. You guys ultimately get to decide what path you're going to take. And most people, unfortunately, choose what we call the 40-40-40 plan. Anybody know what that is? 40 years, 40 hours a week, 40 years of your life for basically living off of when you get um, to the point of what golden years? I don't know what that is. Is anybody, is anybody found, does anybody know what that is yet? Anybody actually, because most of the time when people are supposed to be in their golden years, they're stressed out and worried about if they've got enough money at the end of the month. And then they're going to have to apply for a job at, as a Walmart greeter, right? Let's, to go get abused in that environment, for God's sakes. You know, and I know because my uncle is an assistant manager at, at, uh, at Walmart. So, um, so I started out, like I said, in a, in, a, in a, and this was a few years after I got clean. I met my wife, and we moved into a house. Anybody familiar with St. Pete? So how many of you guys actually in this room by a show of hands are actually from St. Pete? Okay, so I lived over off of 9th Avenue North, okay? And that was the house, okay? You can actually go drive by it. It's on, it's on not like it's like some national monument or something, but oh my God, that's where Dave Sharp used to live. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying it's like that. I'm just saying that the house is there and I don't know if they did any upgrades to it, but when I lived in it, it was pretty, you know, it was pretty run down. And, uh, and I worked construction with my dad because when I knocked on his door and I asked him to help me save my life, he gave me the couch and he took me to work with him to work construction, okay? And eventually, I got this great idea that I wanted to be an entrepreneur and I was going to go do jobs of my own. So I bought this old rusty 1990 Ford F-150 that I had to start with a screwdriver. Anybody familiar with a part on a car called a solenoid? This young lady says she is, are you, do you have like mechanic in your either knowledge or is your dad a mechanic or something? Because I didn't know. I did until I said, hey, dude, I, don't, I went to my dad and said, I don't know how to start this car. And he was like, well, you're going to stick. The fast way to do it, son, is we're just going to, now he's from Alabama. We're going to stick this screwdriver right here in this solenoid. You're going to turn that key over. And now I'm exaggerating a little bit. He's not that, he's not Larry the Cable Guy like that. <laughs> but that's how I started this damn car right, was I would pop, and I was, and, and that was the embarrassment and the shame that I went through for a long time um, of, of, of kind of getting to the place 
to where I can remember I was invited to this business conference and I parked three parking lots away. Anybody ever drove a car that was so shitty that you parked a couple of parking lots away because you didn't want people to know what you pulled up in? You know, I see some, I see some, if I got five heads in here that are naughty, and I know there's at least 20 people because sometimes we're not ready to be totally honest yet. But this thing was a piece of crap. And I obviously um, was pressured a lot by my friends when I told them, because construction wasn't really working out for me, when I told them that I was going to go and pursue, you know, entrepreneurship. Anybody had anybody who was in their life that was negative towards your dreams or aspirations or goals or what you want to do? Anybody have any sly comments? I mean, come on, we all got one or two, right? Somebody who has some, lo- you know, you should really just play it safe. You know, w- what are you doing? This is not going to, or what I used to get was, oh, you're doing another one of these things? Because I was involved in network marketing and all this different stuff and did all kinds of little schemey hustles. And what I realized, which I love this, this quote is, or this little picture is, is, is it's, it's like, well, I don't know where we're going, but from the look of it, it's got to be good. And I felt like for a long time when I, was, um, when I was working jobs and I was working in construction that I was running with like a, a pack of people and we were all running in one direction. And then I would look over and say, hey, why are you running this way? And the person would go, I don't know because everybody else is running. And then I'd look over the person on my left and I'd say, why are we running? And they say, I don't know because everybody else is running. And then finally, I stepped out of that, and I said, where are we all running to, right? Everybody, most of the time, is moving really fast and really busy, but not really going anywhere. And one of the tough decisions that I had to make was, do I want to continue this path with my dad or not? And my dad was somebody who's, like I said, he's a blue-collar guy. His accent's not as country as I just made it out to be. But he's a blue collar, which is nothing wrong with being blue collar, but he's not a business owner. So one of the tough decisions that I had to make with um, becoming an entrepreneur and sort of forging my own path was actually stepping away from my dad. And for a lot of you guys, that's, a, you know, that's sometimes, oftentimes a situation that we find ourselves in is that we've got some sort of a family member or somebody that we're loyal to or somebody that we're working with that in order for us to take it to the next level, we're actually going to have to cut off that relationship, not, not in the terms of a personal sense, but just in the terms of a business sense. And for me, I was never going to get anywhere in life business-wise and financially until I moved away from that relationship and went on my own, okay? And so I started off slowly. As you can see, there's the, there's the infamous truck. And a lot of people don't believe that was my truck until I saw them the picture of actually me standing in front of it. They're like, yeah, right, you just got that off of Google. And it's like, no. Because as a, I started out in affiliate marketing, and I still do affiliate marketing, and I teach affiliate marketing, and I started to earn some checks. And my very first check, which I don't know if you guys have ever been, if, if any of you guys have um, been paid yet as entrepreneurs, right? Or if you've started your agency, or if you've actually you know, earned your first dollar. But my first dollar was a check for $2.50, right? And I got that thing, and I could, you, it would have, it would have, you'd have thought it was a billion dollar check, you know, because it was my first check that I earned on my own, and it was huge. Can any of you guys remember the first time you earned a dollar on your own as an entrepreneur, how big that was, right? If you haven't yet, hang in there for that moment and cherish it because it's monumental. So many entrepreneurs never make that, because we all start out as entrepreneurs, right? We want to be entrepreneurs, right? But until you earn that first dollar, it's not real yet. You got to keep fighting until you earn the first dollar, okay? So my business started off slowly. You can see one thing that's kind of funny about this picture is that I've got, can anybody see the nicotine patch on my shoulder? So I don't know who took that, whether that was my wife or whatever, but I thought it was kind of funny because that was obviously a time that I was quitting smoking. And, uh, and I'm also still to this day, I think almost six years, cigarette free as well, right? So that's another accomplishment on a personal standpoint. Um, my finances in my business, it grew and grew. And again, I started out in affiliate marketing and I started out selling my, my own information products. So similar to what you guys see the Hoth doing with these courses and things that they do, 
I started out selling my own products. And then I also started out affiliate marketing, selling other people's products. Similar to how these guys will white label their services, which is such a brilliant business. You guys have the ability, if you want to start an agency, to have somebody do all of the work for you guys. And is all you have to do is go out and focus on selling, not the delivery. So a lot of times people don't understand how powerful that is. But for me, I got out of the, you know, I, it was kind of like going from park benches to park avenue for me because I started to make more money and I had my first $10,000 month, then my first $20,000 month, and then I got to the point to where I was making six figures a year and then seven figures a year. And this was actually all for me still in my 20s, right? I started my first company when I was 27, my first big company, and that company went on to do $175 million in sales. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Let me get through this because my time, I feel like, is creeping on me. One of the cool things that I want to tell you guys is I bought my, my house cash. Okay, this is the wire because I didn't write a check. I made a wire for $511,000 or whatever it was, $511,000 and, 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 and fi uh, 512000 or so. Oh, no, five eleven. dollars 545 and 45 cents. And the reason why that why I did that is because in Florida you can actually buy your home and homestead it and then nobody can touch that even from a lawsuit. So for me I started to understand a little bit more about asset protection as I started to make some, you know, started to to build my wealth and I knew that as an entrepreneur I was at risk for people to sue me. So I wanted to protect money. That's why OJ moved from California or whatever to Florida when he was going through all that and bought a seven or an eight or a nine or a $10 million house because even if in a civil lawsuit he lost all of his money and, 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 and it was taken from him, they couldn't touch his, his crib, right? They couldn't touch his house because it's homesteaded. So as you become an entrepreneur, one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they don't pay their taxes and they don't protect their money, right? And that was some of the things that I started to learn how to do. This business, though, as it took off, as I put in the hustle, as I kept working, it created a complete lifestyle change for me, which a lot of you guys don't know what you don't know yet, right? Right now, it's just a dream. It's this far-off thing. But I'm telling you, when I was, you know, particularly when I was in that bathroom hunched over that toilet and when I was sleeping on my dad's couch and when I was going to construction sites every day with him, right? I couldn't see getting living in the house that I moved into. I couldn't see eventually driving Range Rovers or whatever car I wanted to drive. I couldn't see going to, to Rome and proposing to my wife, right? We got engaged in Rome. Fellas, dude, how fucking cool is that? You ladies, really, right? It's cool. You know, I, 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 that was so far beyond anything that I could even dream for myself. So the reason why I'm telling you guys this is not to be braggadocious, but if people don't, one day you're going to be up on this, on this stage and you're going to be telling your story and it's going to inspire people. And that's how human beings operate. I'm telling you that as, as many skills as you think that you can learn, as many mechanical things, I got to learn how to, you know, the rankings to the SEO keywords and click here and learn this application. Like all of that, eventually as you, can, as you, as you get bigger, you can outsource that. You have to develop the, the mindset in the heart of a champion. Because ultimately, if you're going to be the CEO of your business, and whether you're the CEO of your one-man show, or whether you're the CEO of your 20 or 30 or 100 man and woman show, ultimately, the buck is going to stop with you. And you're the one who, when the tax bill comes, you're going to have to pay it. Or when somebody's coming in, threatening a lawsuit at you, you're the one who's going to have to go and hire the lawyer. However, you also get to go to Rome and propose to your wife with a big fat nugget on her finger, right? Or be the right, even if you're the breadwinner as a lady, you say, hey, honey, here's 40 grand, go get me a ring. Like put on a nice, put on, put on a nice engagement for me or something, you know? The point is, is that a lot of people want to be the boss, but not a lot of people want to pay the cost, right? And so as an entrepreneur, my job 
when these guys ask me to come in and speak, to step away from my company and my daily worth inside of my company is probably $10,000 a day. I'm not hyping it up. I'm saying my average worth in my company right now is about $10,000 a day. So I'm not here to bullshit you. I'm not here to waste your time or mine. I'm running a company right now that just did $3.5 million last year in its first year in business, right? So I'm stepping away from that to give you guys real experience, and I'm shooting you straight. So the best part of all of this, I think, is what I've been able to do for my family. So I was able to, my mom had an incident where somebody crashed into her, her insurance, something was screwed up, she, she was in a tight spot. So I got off of a plane. I was speaking at another engagement. This was back in 2013. I took her to the dealership and I bought her a brand new car, cash, so she didn't have to worry about the payment, right? For me, that's what this is all about, right? The other cool thing, my dad, the guy who's the blue collar, you know, (laughs) Larry the Cable guy talking Alabama, let me sleep on his couch, helped me put my life back together, when I was at my lowest moment, when I had a a child who was like nine or 10 years old out there that I had when I was 16 that I didn't have custody of and I was wasting time and I was wasting my life and I was losing out on opportunity and I had made the decision to go and F my life up. So I don't play victim stance these days. I don't blame things that I do on other people. But I went out and I made those decisions. I made the decision to hang out with the crowd that I was hanging out with. And he let me sleep on his couch and get my life back together. A grown man sleeping on another grown man's couch. Yeah, he's my dad, but he didn't have to open the door. And one day, some years later, he was driving around a beater of his own, right? And I heard him say under his breath that, hey, you know, man, it'd be nice to have a brand new truck, right? So I took him and I surprised him like this. What would you, what would you say... If I said that was a brand new truck. You're probably a liar. You're full of shit. No. <laughs> you can't make it. No. No way. Yeah. Oh, come on. Don't you want it? Do you like it? (laughs) The only time I've heard him speech. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. So last but not least, this year, a gentleman who's going to be speaking today to you, who's one of the most brilliant content creators I've ever seen. Uh, this guy is should be the rock star of this event. His name's Robert, and you'll meet him later. He reached out to me. Now, this was a weekend that I was supposed to be on uh, vacation, and I, I told my wife I'm not going to work. And, uh, and, and we were down at the Don Cesar, and she had me all to her herself, and she was really happy. And then all of a sudden, I snuck. Now, if you guys know anything about entrepreneurs, I snuck an email, Pete. You know, you guys ever done that? Just, just, just reload the email. Kind of like, like it reminded me of my drug days, like I was hiding from someone. And all of a sudden, on my email, it said, hey, it's Robert from Forbes. And I said, hey, honey, I'll be down in an hour. (laughs) He wanted to interview me, right? And I was like, holy shit. I was like, here's an opportunity to be published on Forbes, right? And a guy who worked hard to become an amazing contributor sat there and he interviewed me over an hour. And I got an amazing article that was printed that really legitimized my brand. I'd done all this sales. I had all this business success. But until you get that third-party credibility like that, a lot of times people still wonder if you're the real deal. So this year, or actually in 2017, because of Robert reaching out and acknowledging my work and my story, who Robert's in the room, raise your hand, brother. Give him a round of applause. 
probably one of the smartest guys in the room, and like I say, another guy who if you get a chance to talk to, shake his hand, learn anything from him, that's, that's, that's another one of those guys. And, uh, and so I got published in Forbes, and that was a great asset to my business that legitimized uh, what we were doing, uh, particularly in the, in the phase of, of a new company. And so um, I'm going to talk to you again about these sustainable success principles. The first one is that you really should grow slow and controlled. A lot of you guys want to go from zero to a million fast, right? But there's power in growing slow and controlled. And the reason why I have two pictures here, because in my last company, that was pictures from our events. And then on the other side is my new company, and it's smaller, it's more controlled, right? And my last company, we did $175 million in three years. I sold my half of that company, and I made an exit in 2014, okay, for an undisclosed amount. It was a, it was a private NDA deal that we did, and, but it was a healthy deal, and, you know, it was a great build. It was a great run. It taught me a lot about entre- entrepreneurship, and, um, and I made a lot of money. And, uh, and I helped a lot of people. We had a blogging platform, and we, were, we had 250,000 people on our blogging platform paying $25 a month. It was amazing. It was a, it was a really great company, really great run. And um, we did massive events. We did education. And what, what the problem was is that we, we, we grew so fast that it was hard to keep operations up with our growth. Okay? And I'm giving you guys maybe a, a, a look into the future from where you're at right now. Okay? And so... Um, but you'll need this if you take these notes. If you remember what Dave Sharp said at HothCon in 2018, you can apply this when you do your first million or your first five million or your first 10 million in your company. And so the difference, just to look at them side by side, was the revenue in 2011 with that company was three million in the first two months, where the revenue in Legendary Marketer this last year was three and a half million collected. Okay? I don't talk about gross sales. It's not what I got at accounts receivable. It's how much money hit the bank account. Right? It was $3.5 million last year in Legendary Marketer in our first 12 months. Obviously, one might say, well, this, this other company was a much bigger success. But it's untrue because the way that we're building this company is to be a longer term. It's the difference between making a million in one year or making ten or 20000 over 20 years, right? a month. That's the difference. That's the difference between sustainable growth. The other comparison, we had 10,000 members or customers our first month. Over here, we had 10,000 customers our first year. Again, we knew that we didn't want to outgrow our ability to be able to scale our operations. Okay? The, the, last but not least, the tall tale sign of the, the two differences was we had 10 staff members in our other company the first year, whereas we've, had, we've gone from one employee to 20 the first year in Legendary Marketer. Can you see the difference there? There's a difference there in how we're setting it up for long-term sustainable success. We're focusing more on the internal aspect of building our operations team and setting a solid foundation, okay? Number two, understand what your business weaknesses are, okay, and anticipate them. We talked about this at lunch a few minutes ago. One of the biggest problems that people have in their business is actually, believe it or not, accepting money. Would you believe that? Most of you guys are going, well, what the hell? I'm just trying to get some money in. But the truth is, is that the merchant account world is a massive, massive, ugly world that will shut you down. They'll just stop processing or they'll hold your money. So you have to understand what your risk is. Are you a high-risk business? Are you a low-risk business? If you're online, I'm telling you already, you're high-risk. If the card is not present when the transaction is being run, you're high-risk. So understand that. Anticipate that. Set yourself up with multiple merchant accounts. We have five merchant accounts right now inside of our current company. A couple of them have unlimited processing ability. Why did we do that? Why do we have that? Because we've grown slow. Instead of just going from zero to 100 and the banks freak out and say, what are these guys doing? Because I've been shut down before. They're going, oh, I like this nice steady growth curve. These guys make me feel comfortable, right? It's called staying under the radar, not putting a big bullseye on your back, okay? The other thing is, is your weakness numbers. A lot of you guys, if you're a creative type, your weakness is going to be numbers, It's going to be keeping track of your accounting. It's going to be thinking that every dollar that you made during the year, you get to put in your pocket. Ah, Wrong. 
When you get that tax bill at the end of the year, if you didn't pay quarterly, it's going to hurt. And then some entrepreneurs never recover from that. There's a lot of people who are successful on YouTube who are in debt or owe the government tax money. Don't be that guy. Don't be that girl. Okay? Number three, understand your personal weaknesses and anticipate them. I gave you a couple of examples. This year in my company and in my life, I really focused on clear communication. So often we have misunderstandings between people and it could have been avoided if we worked on being more clear. That means that I got to spend an extra two or three minutes sitting down with you actually saying back to you what you just said to me to make sure that you're clear on what I'm saying and also so I can make sure that I'm clear on what you're saying. Have you ever heard of somebody who's been had a resentment and not talked to somebody for 20 years or maybe you're that guy or girl in the room? Oftentimes it was something that was misunderstood. They didn't even mean to say it that way. So my personal relationships in 2017 as well as my business life has flourished my relationships have deepened, they've strengthened, my connectiveness to the people around me have strengthened because, and they respect me more, because I seek clarity with them. I want to understand what your expectations are of me, and I want, to understand my expect I want you to understand my expectations of you. Because if we're ever not meeting those expectations, then it's, it's, that's the solution or the equation, that's the equation for a relationship gone bad. Does this make sense to everybody? Yes? yes. Guys, yes? yes? It's really important. Focus, focus, focus. How many of you guys are in multiple businesses in this room? Hands up. Come on, mul come on, multiple businesses, hands up. And that's maybe your biggest problem. It may be your biggest problem. Because we as entrepreneurs, we love to start stuff. Man, we're going to change the world with this idea. But we don't always finish what we started, right? So all of a sudden, is anybody relating to this so far? All of a sudden, we have five different projects over there. Each one is going to make a billion dollars and change the world. And it's like, so how much money did you make this year in all your businesses? Well, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about this idea over here because this is a game changer, right? So focus, focus, focus. You have to be militant with your focus. That's what I learned. I had a, I had a business that was doing $10 million a month, and I was over screwing around with something that was bringing in five or 10000 a month. That was the unmanageability of being an entrepreneur. It's a gift and a curse. You've got to know your weaknesses. You've got to anticipate them. Addiction. How many people know somebody, I'm going to give you that out, know somebody or have struggled with addiction themselves? Hands up. Know somebody, okay, so you don't have to say, I'm an addict. I'm giving you an out. You know somebody. And, and, and let, me get, let me get raw here. Drugs, alcohol. Porn, gambling, sex, food, cell phone, social media. That's up and coming, though. Okay? That's still in the intermediate amateur level. I'm just getting warmed up, and I only got six minutes. This is crazy. That's why my events go for two days, and it takes me an hour to just stop bullshitting, right, and really get into the meat and potatoes. Addiction. It's a huge thing. I've been an addiction. I've been an addict of many different sorts, of many different flavors, Okay, whether it was sex or love or whether it was drugs or alcohol or whether it was business and making money. I've been an addict of all of those things. And when my personal life is unmanageable, when I'm when I'm when I'm when I have, you know, discord, when I have when I have um, when I'm when I'm when I'm making and this is the worst place to be is financially just flying and spiritually and emotionally bankrupt. And I know a lot of entrepreneurs who are like that. They got all the money in the world and they're empty shells walking around, you know, basically wearing a mask. I don't want to be that guy anymore. I've been that guy before. I'm here telling you and sharing with you my pain of what I've done and what I've seen. I've seen people crash their business into the ground because of these specific things, particularly what goes on behind your closed doors. How you live your personal life is a direct reflection of how you're going to build your business. What you do in your off time when nobody's looking, is it, it's not going to be a secret for long. If you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to lead people, if you want to close deals, if you want to look people in the eye, if you want to grow a company, it will come out. And as one of my buddies says, if it doesn't come out in the wash, it'll always come out in the rinse. <laughs> Believe that. Believe that. 
I've learned this lesson the hard way a lot of times. I put down this particular addiction and picked up this addiction. Put down this addiction. It's like playing a game of whack-a-mole. If you're somebody like me, right? And I'm not saying that addiction, maybe it's something else. Maybe focus is your problem, right? Maybe it's something else. You, my, the point that I'm making here, this is not a 12-step meeting. The point that I'm making is understand your weaknesses and anticipate them. Know who you are. Know thyself, right? If you want to be a great entrepreneur, you have to, know, you have to be ruthlessly honest about who you are. You have to be ruthlessly honest about what your weaknesses is. Every single day, I spend more time talking about and getting feedback and asking questions about what are my, what are my blind spots? Where can I get better? What's your feedback from me as the CEO of my company? Right, Bob's my executive assistant right there. Raise your hand and give Bob a big round of applause. I'm Hurricane David and that's Red Cross Bob, right? So what Bob will tell you if you go up to him and talk to him is that that's his role, right? Is to give me feedback. When I'm, it, it, you, it doesn't have to be pretty. You don't have to be, per see there's that spit, that DNA, right? On that first row. It doesn't have to be pretty, guys. Being an entrepreneur, you don't have to be perfect. It's not about putting on a good look and, you know, how do I look? How do I sound? Anybody ever recorded a video and done 20 takes because you didn't like the first through 19 and then finally you were like, fuck it, I'm just putting it up. It's midnight, right? It doesn't matter how you look. It doesn't, it do, all that doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is, are you seeking clarity? Are you on the same level with the people around you? Are you focused? Right? Because if you get thrown off from a challenge and the next day it's like, well, I'm not doing that anymore. Let me go do this thing over here that's easy. Most people leave their businesses five, literally five days or five weeks before the miracle happens, sometimes even five minutes. You're right in front of overcoming a challenge and on that other side is your breakthrough and you walk away from it. Right? Be mindful of that. Know yourself. Business is not a game of clicking buttons and, 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 and counting, you know, counting, you know, uh, you know, counting coins and, you know, being a, a, a you know, this, the SE, internet marketing is such a, it's, there's so many different rabbit holes you could get lost in. It's like, oh, now I got to learn the new SEO update over here, Google, you know, polar bear or whatever, you know. That stuff doesn't even matter. If you guys walk away from this realizing that your success depends on you developing these personal skill sets and that all that stuff can be learned, honestly, the goal is, is to have somebody else going and learning that and bringing that information to you, right? So you're not doing that every day, right? Number four, the difference between Investing in your time and investing in people. You got to know when and where, right? It's not, know when to hold them, know when to fold them, right? In the beginning, you invest your time. And as you grow, you need to learn how to invest in people. Want to know the, 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 probably the top three reason why most could be successful businesses fail? Because the founder won't get the fuck up. Is this, are we cussing in this event? Is that cool? <laughs> Because the founder won't get the fuck out of the way. That's why most people, Bob and I struggle with this every day. I want to get on every call. I want to get on every webinar. I want to make sure they're doing it just the way that I want them to do it. I want to hire you and pay you a good salary. Then I want to stand over you and tell you, nope, you didn't, you didn't, ma'am, excuse me. I know I'm paying you $100,000 a year. You didn't put a period at the end of that sentence. Okay, you didn't dot that I and cross that T the way that I would, okay? People don't want to work for somebody like that. You have to eventually know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Know when to invest your time and know when to invest in people. That's been a huge growing thing for me personally, right? I'm speaking from experience. This is not a, this is not a Harvard business class to where we're up here, you know, talking about what happens out there in the real world, guys. This is what happens in the real world. This is what I experience every day, okay? Number five, live and do. This is the fifth one, okay? We're winding down. I know it's almost over. I'm so sorry, right? I'm going to have to go soon, okay? Number five, live and do business below your means. You guys ever seen the YouTube videos or the, you know, where they're popping out of the fancy cars and 
wearing the 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 Rolexes, which there's no ro because I got a Rolex. They gave away a couple of Rolex. Who in here wants a Rolex? Be honest, right? Come on, let's get honest. My girl's like, I want one, right? I don't give a damn. Put that big 40, 40 bezel on my wrist. I'll I'll kill it in that thing, right? So the point is, is that most of the time we outspend our ability to be able to support those 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 wants, not those needs, right? A lot of times. Um, particularly in, in, in places to where people are making a lot of money fast, a lot of, for, for example, in sports, there was a documentary that came out on NFL players called Broke. Anybody seen that? Okay. Where, what was the percentage of them that were broke five years after they left the league in, in the 70s? 70 plus percentage of these guys, hardworking, put their lives on. The, I mean, honestly, we can say it's just a sport until you put the helmet on and get out there and get your head smashed in, Right? A lot of them were having, you know, we don't know what the long-term, you know, there's long-term injuries in that sport, right? So anyways, they've worked their ass off for 10 or 15 or 20 years in the league, and now they leave and they're broke. 70-plus percent was the statistic. Not all of them, right? Then you see people like A-Rod on Shark Tank, right? People like that who made a lot of money, who invested it in businesses, right? Who went out there and, and, and became entrepreneurs and learned that sport, which this is a sport, guys, if you think that you're getting into entrepreneurship and it's just, you know, this isn't taking tests. This isn't school, right? You, in, 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 in entrepreneurship, you don't get a grade for a lot of people stay safe in school, right? I had a lady who applied at one of my, at, at my company uh, uh, about three months ago and she'd been in school literally for like 30 years, right? And she had all of these degrees. She was a PhD. I said, lady, what can you do for me? You, you're great at taking tests. That's it. You stay there because that's where your safe place is. How many of you guys have a safe place? We've all got it. We don't want to step out of that comfort zone. That was her safe place, school. I know a lot of people. But the problem with that is we go back and we get ourselves in more debt, right? And did you know student loans are the only debt that can't be forgiven in a bankruptcy? Did you know that? They, they, didn't, they didn't tell me that. I don't know if they told you that, right? They didn't tell me that. So most people leave school with 50000 plus in debt, don't know, can't write it off in a bankruptcy, got to pay it back. I got cardiac surgeon friends who are 10 years into their job and still haven't paid their debts back. They are not rich. They are not wealthy. Entrepreneurship's where it's at if you know how to do it, if you do it right, if you live below your means, right? So hire slow, fire fast, okay? That's key, right? Hire people with more heart than talent, be able to identify people who have heart instead of somebody who has degrees. And all. I'm not saying going to college is bad. I'm just saying that if that's your only worth, is a, is, is, if, if that's how you're valuing yourself, please also make sure that your heart is equally as abundant. Please make sure that your drive, that your willingness to be humble, that your willingness to get in the trenches and work until midnight if that's what it takes. When you guys hit a million in, in monthly sales, were you guys in the office at what, 9, 10, 11, 12 o'clock, right? It's crazy. That's what you got to do, right? I, I know these guys' journey because they're friends of mine. I, 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 I learn about their company. I study them. This company that you're here at this event is living proof of everything that I'm talking about, right? That's why this is a great event to be at. Get good at playing broke. Look, most people make a little bit of money. They're like, yo, let me tell you about what I made. Right? You ever heard the, the, uh, the phrase, don't ever talk about how much you make, anything about your love life, or what your next move is. Now, that's on a meme out there. I know that I just became an internet meme there for a second. But it's sort of true, right? I learned to start playing broke. That way I had more negotiating power in business. So I didn't walk up flaunting my success right? I said, hey, we're tight. This is our first year. I need a good deal. They came. I'm always countering, right, in my negotiations. I, see, I watch Shark Tank. It's all I watch on TV. Now I'm a little obsessive, right? It's all I watch, though. Ask Bob. It's all I watch because I love the, the art of the negotiation, right? You can see I'm passionate about this. This is my life. Entrepreneurship's my life. It's all I got. It gave me a future. A kid who was a high school dropout, I finished not that Ninth grade, I dropped out in ninth grade. Teenage father, drug addict, right? All of those things were against me. Criminal record, been to jail, been to treatment. This is who I am. This is all I got. You're damn right my back's against the wall. You, is your back against the wall? That's the question, right? I'm throwing all kinds of shit at you because they're, they're killing me on time back here, right? 
Find, take trial runs with new hires. A lot of times we want to we interview for months. Oh, God, we're on our 10th interview. Just hire them and take them on a 30-day trial run. Set the expectation that, you know what? Let's see how it works for 30 days, right? Because this is like a marriage. If Bob, I'm like married to Bob now. I hired him. He's my executive assistant. He's, but I'm like married to him, right? I, I, I need to take a trial run with somebody before I hire them full time, right? I want to get to know them. It's just, like, it's just like dating. It's just like marriage, right? You want to go on a few dates with them. Take 30, 60, 90 days. Set that expectation. Give them a, a certain amount of pay and give them a, an upgrade or a pay raise or what you initially offered them at 30, 60, or 90 days if it works out, right? But that expectation was set properly. Get the office and the overhead last, not first, right? All of the things that you think you need, you probably don't need in your business, right? All these fancy gadgets. You know, I know people who will say, well, I got to get ready to blow it up in my business. I'm going to go buy the new iPhone, whatever it is. I don't even know. I got like the five in my pocket. And I got to have the new iMac computer. Oh, we got to have an office. Before you know it, they've, they've got twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 in debt just from setting up an office, it's like, who needs that? Get, get comfortable in the slime, right? Get comfortable in the trenches. Get comfortable with your desk being a mess. Get comfortable with, 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 with disarray, right? Focus more every day on your highest priority items and getting a good night's sleep, right? And eating when you're supposed to eat, right? Do, I know it's like growing up all over again. It's like, learn, but they don't teach this in school, guys. Did you learn this in 12th grade with Mrs. Smith? You know, with Mrs. Smith, did she teach you about how to run a million dollar business? No, because Mrs. Smith was, now God bless Mrs. Smith, because we all need a Mrs. Smith in our life, but she was making $23,000, and she didn't know how to teach me how to build a million dollar business, right? She didn't tell me, get comfortable in the trenches, David. Get comfortable in a shit in that shitty diaper for a little while, right? Now, I've got a 20-month-old, so I've changed a lot of diapers, so that's where that came from. But get comfortable. You don't, all, you don't need to change your huggy every hour just because there's a little pee in it, right? Sit in it. Get comfortable in the shit for a little while, right? Save your money. Hoard your money, right? Negotiate. Play broke, right? Make the most out of your current staff before you hire new people. So a lot of you guys are going to grow. You're going to start with one person, two, and then you're going to get. Then, then you're going to you're going to say, "Hey, you know what? I'm ready for a I'm ready for a COO. You know, I'm ready for a CEO in this bitch. You know, I'm ready. I need a I need a I need a marketing director. You know, I'm ready to take this business to the next level. Now, obviously, you women wouldn't say that. I was making fun of us guys because that's how we get. Right? It's like, oh yeah, let's get the office and hire the CEO and we're taking it to the next level. We're blowing this business up, right? And the, tr the truth of the matter is, is that you have people right now in your life and on your team that could be as probably, maybe not 10 times, but probably two to three more times valuable than what they are right now to you, right? It's just you gotta give them a little more opportunity. You gotta negotiate a better deal with them. You gotta maybe inspire them every single day. My job in my company is to inspire my people, to inspire them to wanna work for me, to inspire them. If I don't have the vision, if you don't have the vision, who do you expect to have the vision? Are you waiting on somebody else to have the vision for you? You gotta have the vision. You gotta tell the story of why you're doing what you're doing. It's your job, that's your job, right? You don't plan on being the customer service agent inside of your company that you own, do you? You're going to be the CEO, right? So you have to do that. You have to paint that picture. You have to get what I told somebody on a, a, our, our entire team. We do a vision call every Friday. And I said, give me 20% more. Just give me 20% more of what you're doing right now. Because nobody's going to treat your business like you treat your business. So don't expect anybody to. But you can ask, can I have 20% more? Can you guys just give me 20% more? Here's why. And have a vision for them. Your goal is the reason why my goal is a billion dollars in sales, because that's a goal all of my employees fit into. Everybody fits into that goal. So your goal has to be big enough. 
on a personal level. Live in this shitty apartment, right? Then buy the house cash asset protection. I talked about that a second ago. I lived in, and you know what? I was making a lot of money and and I went and I did rent the, 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 the $3,000 house for nine months. I did do that. But then I took a lump sum and I went and bought my house. But I lived in that shitty house and launched my first company that did $175 million out of that, out of that, it was a ran down, it was, a, it, was a, it was like a hut, you know? It was a, the only thing it didn't have was palm fronds on the roof. Everything else, it was cold, there was no central heating, it needed a paint job, but I didn't care. It wasn't about the outer look. It wasn't about what it looked like. It, it, it mattered what it was, right? So live in the shitty house. Drive the shitty car. Build your worth based on what you can do and who you are instead of what you have. And if you do that from the beginning, then when you have those things, they'll only make you more of who you already are. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Are you guys in a, like, are you hypnotized? I know it was just lunch. Save, 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 guys. Save, save, save. Okay? I know I got two minutes. I thought that thing was counting down, but then all of a sudden I realized it was counting up, and I was like, man, these guys are being great. They're giving me more time, right? Okay, two minutes, and I'm done. You get more time like every second, see? I get more time <laughs> every second. Up. Every second that goes by, I get more time. <laughs> Marry someone who likes to save more than spend. We're not, that's a whole different segment, people. This ain't the Steve Harvey show. But marry somebody who likes to save more than spend. Vacation often, but do staycations, right? It's just as good. Go down to the Don Cesar. Me and, you might catch me and Hardgrove down there all the time. Use appreciating cash flow machines to buy depreciating assets. Let me say that again. Use appreciating cash flow machines like your business to buy depreciating things like your car, right? Use things that bring in money, real estate, those kind of things to buy depreciating. Do that first, then buy the car. Don't buy the car, then build the business. Does that make sense? So back to my goal. I got to remind myself of this goal. I'm getting a diamond pennant that says 1B on it. Because every day when I get up, I wanna look in the mirror and I wanna remind myself what my goal is for this company, right? This is not a life goal. This is just a goal for the company, right? This company that I'm building right now, $1 billion in sales, right? That's the goal, right? That's not what I'll sell it for, that's just the goal, right? Of what I wanna do in sales. You gotta have your goals front and center. So me putting this up on the slide and declaring this for you guys in front of you, not, it's not particularly for you, it's also for me, right? Feed your story and your inspiration everywhere you go. Last but not least, I got a gift. How many of you guys would like to come to an event that we're doing either now or sometime in the future and learn more about marketing for free? Guys, you don't have to pay for it for free. You're special guest here, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm doing an event this weekend. It's all value, guys. The event is all value, and it's all about digital marketing. It's all about entrepreneurship. It's called the sales and marketing experience. It's going to be in the same hotel. Go figure, right? So I thought this would be a valuable gift to you guys because some of you might say, hey, I just want to stay a couple of extra days and go to this event. So it's going to be in the same room. We're going to have two days of massive value, tons of speakers. I'm going to be doing several segments. And if you see Bob when this segment's done, he'll put your name on the list. And Bob's right there. Raise your hand again, Bob. This is my gift to you. This is a small, intimate event. And if you guys want to come, you can be my VIP guest. Just mention your name. Bob will take that down and mention that you're from the Hoth. Last but not least, if you want text message updates from me, you can text 31996 type the words VIP. So text VIP to 31996 and you can unsubscribe at any time if you don't want to get them anymore. And for me, that's it. Thank you so much.